Hi guys, so welcome back to another Coding Minds Project Web Conference. So as usual, the hosts for tonight are myself, Terence Chen, and Angel Chung. Uh, today we'll be looking at Wilson's project, and uh, I'll give a little introduction on it before he presents. So one of the top concerns for us high school students is writing essays. And so not only do we have to write analytical essays in school, uh, we also depend on writing as a measurement tool to convince college admissions of like our qualifications and language skills. So for starters, we have the SAT essays, the college essays, and essays on the TOEFL test for international students, to name a few. And so even after graduating high school, analytical writing skills are still needed on the graduate uh, record exams or the GRE. And so as you can see, writing is a big part of the high school experience and beyond. So Harrison's program is a great practical tool for students everywhere. Uh, he uses natural language processing to, to automatically score essays in his program. And so Harrison, you can start your screen and begin whenever you're ready. So um, my name is Wilson and I'll be talking about my um, automated essay scoring system using multi-model machine learning. So we all know the stress of trying to write an essay and teachers often grade hundreds of these essays every time we write them. So how to grade essays efficiently has become a problem, especially for tests such as the SAT, where uh, tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of essays are graded. So how teachers grade essays are based on two main, they base their uh, score on two main bases, the content of the essay and your ability to write the essay. So the content of the essay is how relevant is your essay to the prompt. So you can't write about Donut when they ask you to analyze another essay, right? And they also grade you based on your ability to write. So using different vocabularies and longer essays usually scores higher most of the time. And uh, they also look at your grammar mistakes because if you have too much grammar mistake, that might impede their understanding of your essay. So you might get a lower score. So how do we create a neural network that combat these problems? So we create a neural network to match the, to match the human grader. So on the left branch, the left top branch, uh, it processes the content of the essay using glove embedding and LSTM neural network. And on the right branch, we have a feature extraction neural network that processes the different, your ability to write. So the word counts, the uh, unique word counts, and we get the output from each one of these neural networks and combine them and input them into the final neural network, which is a two-layer neural network that gives the score of the essay. So natural language processing and GLOVE. So for the left branch, so we use the GLOVE to represent the content of the essay. So GLOVE stands for Global Vector for Word Representation. So I use the fixed length word vector so I use a fixed length vector to represent different words. For example, this array, as you can see here, is the glove representation of the word glove. So we're using a, a fixed length of 50 right now. So since it's, this uh, vector is trained on a very large corpus, so it's trained on Wikipedia, Twitter, Google, different web sources. So this is really accurate in predicting the content of the essay. So I'm gonna, uh, oops. We're calculate, we're trying to find the result of each of this equation. So king minus men plus women. Um, type in the chat, what do you think the result will be? Yeah, guys, please type in chat. Uh, Wilson, uh, could you give a little more context for the audience? Uh, what does it mean by similar words? Is it calculating well, based on the length? The, yeah, no, it's similarity means how, how relevant each word is to each other. So men and women are related, but they're kind of different, right? Because they're both genders, right? King, king is also related to men because king themselves are men. So if you subtract men, king, men from king and add woman, 
it should be pretty obvious what the answer would be. It outputs king as first, but it, it outputs queen as well. So it's the glove embedding is not perfect, but gives a pretty accurate representation of the word. So another one we can try is a pretty difficult one is twig minus branches. So it's so this is basically a mind exercise of twigs are two branches as fingers are two what? So that's glove. So basically it's able to represent the meaning of the word by using a vector. So now we talked about how we represent the content of the essay. So we talked about how, how we, how we, the neural network evaluate uh, the student's ability to write. So we first calculate the word count, the character count, average word count, and unique word count to evaluate your ability to command the language. Of course, it's not perfect, but it gives a pretty good idea of how well uh, the overall essay is. And we, you, we evaluate your grammar mistakes and part of speech count. So the part of speech count is pretty important. So say you never use adjectives in your essay. It's not going to be a good essay. But if you use up too much adjectives, that just mean, means you're not focusing on the main, you're, you're being irrelevant to the prompt. Also, we remove stop word. So the word, so words that are irrelevant to the topic. So these words, the, the, uh, I, you, he, are, is, and many other words, they don't have meaning in glove when represented using glove embeddings. So it's not going to make the, so when we process the essay using glove embeddings with these stop words, the content of the essay becomes less clear when we input it into the neural network. So we remove these words and then we put, and then we use the glove embedding to represent these the essay so that the focus, the content of the essay is much more clear. Also, we remove these words and then check the word count again. So all of these counts again to prevent students from filling their essays with these random words and trying to get a higher score because the essay looks longer. So this is the final version of the essay. So we import all of these things. We load the model here. And this is the feature extraction part. So the part of speech, the character count, the sentence count, and we put them all in one vector for the uh, feature extraction part. So the, for the feature extraction neural network. And here is the glove, glove uh, neural network. So we have to first create an embedding by getting the glove from the from our file. And then we use a tokenizer to tokenize each individual essays. So, we, so what we are inputting into each essay is not the essay itself. It's a tokenized sequence uh, of the essay. So each word has a corresponding number. So this way, we're it's much easier for the neural network to calculate as opposed to having to tokenize and converting each word into a, into a glove representation of the word and then calculating the output. So this is the glove. And now we can just, so if we run this code right here, ask us to enter an essay. So here is the training set of the first essay. So we can just get any essay, different scores. The scores on this side, this is the score of each grader, and they combine to give a different, this is two grader, two human grader, and the final score is given based on the, by adding these two. So we pick a score of 10, and this is the first prompt. And it gives a score of 10, as expected. So now we choose a lower score essay, for example, the four right here. See how this essay is so much shorter than the other one? So the word count does make a difference, but only in very significant cases. So we run the program again. And as expected, 
it gets a four. However, this program is not perfect. So if we get, get, get the uh, neural network a maximum score essay, so see this one is not even as long as the other one, but it received a 12 from human grader. So we go over here and it gives the essay a nine. So this is the limitation of the neural network. So it's not able to recognize really high scoring essays or really low scoring essays like this one. So this one received a two and this guy only wrote three sentences. So he gives the essay a five. So the limitation of this neural network is that without too much example of a really high scoring essay, so 12 and really and small example, small sample size of low scoring essays like twos. So it can't really know what is a really high scoring essay and what is a really low scoring essay. Because we have we have so much data regarding scores between six and eleven, it's able to pretty easily determine what is a what is an example of essay between that score range. But because we have so few training data for scores outside those ranges, the neural network does not want to uh, risk uh, sacrificing its accuracy to give a really low or really high uh, score for those essays. So it's so that's one of the limitations of the automated essay grading system right now. So this is the first data set. So there's various data sets. So this is the second prompt and the third prompt. So see the third prompt is evaluated from zero to three. And we can just copy. So the third prompt is a really short uh, commentary prompt. So we copy one of this and we can put it in our essay grading system. So each time you change the prompt, it's going to load a new token, tokenizer and a new model. So this one got the three. And as we can see, it's a three. So um, the automated essay grading system works great for shorter essays and for essay and for the scoring range being very small because you have a very large data data set for each essay so the neural network can recognize which set which score the essay belongs to but when you have a really wide range of scores the neural network kind of gets get lost and doesn't really know which set which score to, to give to the essay so that's the limitation of the neural, of this automated essay grading system so I'm going to talk about the training process of the neural network now. So this is the pre-processing before large sets of data. And so I, um, so for my research paper, I have you tried to use three different types of neural networks to experiment. So bi-directional LSTM, gated recurrent unit, and LSTM here. So all of these are recurrent neural networks, meaning they can uh, choose, they can recognize information from the past. So when you put a very long essay into a, when you put a very long essay into a neural network, so sometimes the neural network will, will forget previous information. So all of these neural networks are designed so they remember part of the information from the past. They can, they have a forget gate to forget uh, irrelevant information. So this way, it recognized the content of the essay much clearer. So I, I experimented, I experimented with these three and found that LSTM neural network performed the best actually. And the image, the learning rate over Epoch. So how fast the neural neural network learn over time? And this is the training process. So the training, so this cross categorical cross entropy is the error. So error goes down and the accuracy goes up. So it's pretty easy to understand these graphs. And that's about it. Okay, I think Eric has a question. 
What is the name of your app and is it mm -hmm. on the app store? Uh, no, I haven't developed an app for this. It's mainly just the backend code. You can, if you want a copy of the backend code, I can give you one. But the limitation of the network, this program, is it, it can only grade essays based on trained prompts. So you have, so we currently train, train this essay on eight different prompts. So outside of this, those eight different prompts, we can't really evaluate an essay correctly because each prompt, the content is different and the neural network has to learn the content of that essay, of that prompt, right? So um, I'm trying to find the, create a more generic program where it can evaluate essays regardless of the prompt, but that would be less accurate because, because the content part of the neural network will be uh, essentially useless. So it's only going to be the feature extraction part. And also, um, each prompt requires a really large number of training data. And the wider the score range, the more training data it requires. So as you can see here, we have, so for prompt one, we had around 1.7K of training data. So it's pretty large for one prompt. So it's not gonna be really good for classroom uses. It's gonna be great for a test such as the SAT because it has a really large database. And after the first couple thousand, the rest, uh, because there are tens of thousands of essays. So now they only need to grade the first couple thousand, train it using the neural network. And then we can have a, they can use the system to train essays after that. Right, nice. So do you plan on continue working on this project in the future? Sure. Okay. And so then how did you come up with this idea? So at first I was building a simple, uh, a very simple database system for the teacher. Uh, a teacher at my school asked me to um, create a essay grading system to help her. It doesn't really grade the essay, she just grades the essay. And then we provide the rubrics and then she fill in the rubrics. And then from the rubrics, we calculate the score and then enter into, into a database. And then we, we have different graphs to represent uh, the percentage of scores and the trends from past essays. So things like that, but that's very simple. So I wanted to do something uh, much deeper. So I created this, neural network system. So at first, it's just the, so I only used the glove neural network and it didn't perform too well because although it performed well on the training set, but all the training sets are very serious essays. And so they are actually trying to write the essays. So when I was testing it myself, I just put random words related to the prompt and it still received a really high score because the content matches, right? So I added the feature extraction part. So it's a multi-model neural network and it can correctly classify between uh, the good essays and the bad essays that are try just trying to fool the system. Right, and can you explain a bit more about the multi-model uh, um, thing you talked about earlier? Like how does- Oh yeah, so usually it's just a single model neural network. So what you usually have is just this from using the Kira's um, sequential uh, neural network. So and you don't write codes like this, you write much more simple codes. So Kira's dot add layer, so model dot add layer, give, enter a layer name and then add another layer. So using, so in order to create this multi-model, you kind of have to use the functional API to customize your own model. So it's kind of, it's more complicated, but it's still doable. So if I, if I don't use this multi-model, if I don't customize it, I can only have one line going through. So I can't have, I can't have two separate models combining into one. Yeah, I see what you mean. 
Wilson. Oh, yeah. Uh, so you said you wrote a research paper on it. Uh, did, are you planning on publishing it? Oh yeah, I'm published. It's already been accepted to the data mining conference in the at the end of October, I believe. And will be published at the end of October. Yeah. Nice. So it is based the paper basically um, tries to find which neural network work, works the best. So comparing the result between LSTM, BioLSTM, and GRU. And one more factor I've evaluated is the length of each glove embedding. So as I've shown in the PPT slide, uh, we use I use the length of 50 to represent the word glove. So there are many different length available. So 50, 100, 200, and 300. So with a longer glove embedding length, you're getting more information, but it's more specific information. And sometimes you don't really need that specific information. But with a shorter uh, embedding length, you're getting really general information because each, so a, a length of 50 means there are 50 different categories. So the first, first one might be uh, re relationship to eyes. Second one might be relationship to people. So there are 50 categories that the word is evaluated upon. So how relevant it is to those categories. And with, the, with 50, you're only getting 50 categories. But with 300, you're getting 300 categories so to the, that the word is related to. But sometimes it's not great for that many information. So after the research, I found that a length of 200 is most optimal for my current model. It's like right in between. So you're getting the necessary information but you're get, not getting too specific information. And those useless information can sometimes confuse the neural network if you put too much of it. Cool, and how long did it take you to make this program? Oh, so the first model, the first glove model took uh, a month because I have to learn about uh, neural networks to start with. You have to learn about uh, the basic here is, um, sequential model and I have to learn about how to implement the glove embedding and the different types of neural network I can use. So after that, I tried to improve upon the glove model but found little to no success actually. And by the end, I was thinking maybe I can just create something of my own. So multi-model neural network. So first, it's just the uh, data feature extraction model I was building because I have to familiarize myself with the data extraction, feature extraction model. And then after I'm familiar with both model, I can, it's just simply combining the two using the Kira's uh, functional API. And it's pretty easy from that. So the glove model took a month. The, the feature extraction model took two weeks because it's, you don't have to learn about uh, glove embedding is just get obtaining the word counts from each essay and then using a simple two-layer neural network. And this one took two, another two weeks because you have to combine it. And the training, you have, to, you have to use a learning rate curve. You have to use a custom learning rate because a standard flat line learning rate is going to train really slowly. And then sometimes it's not even going to get to the most optimal um, accuracy. So that one took two weeks and yeah. Uh, what was something that you disliked or want to change about your program? Um, definitely the feature extraction part because the code is really unclean as you can see here. There's so many random things here. That's pretty much useless. And also, one thing I really disliked is, uh, as I said before, uh, the network's performance on longer essays. So if we scroll down to the bottom, so from prompt one, so there are eight different essay set. So the first five are relatively short essays, so around 300 words each. 
with um, essay three and four being really short, and seven and eight is are really long essays. So as you can see here, so for prompt eight, I only managed to obtain an accuracy of 0 0.2 to something. So, but with prompt three and four, so that's prompt seven, oh wait. Oh, all of these are prompt seven and eight. Uh, let me find the prompt three. So all of these are data training files, as you can see here. So how well each data network performed. So the BioSTM um, essay set 2.2 with an embedding length of 50. So everything is organized. So if we look here, so see the, the BIOS TM with a 300 approaches nearly 100% accuracy on SA sets like three. But if we go to BIOS TM's performance on eight, so the same year work embedding length of three, it only managed 22.5%. So that's a really huge difference. So that's probably the one thing I disliked about my neural network. Uh, also, I'm not sure if you mentioned this before, but uh, where do you get your um, training sets from, like the essays? Oh, um, I got my training sets from a Kaggle competition eight years ago. They offer like this really big training set. So this is only a fraction of the training set, 1.2K. They have another um, 5K and another file and another 5K for the uh, test validation set. So with uh, that much information, it's pretty easy to train. But they didn't offer enough training data for longer essays. And I think that's one of the reasons it performed so poorly, because if we had enough training data, uh, the test, the essay set eight and seven, I think will improve a lot. Interesting. I think around four years. So I'm a senior right now. So in my freshman year, I've coded a library management system. So where you can rent books and return books to a, to a library and it warns the librarian about uh, when the book is overdue and how much fine you pay based on the days that you haven't returned it. And after that, uh, it's based, so after that, it's basically the very simple uh, rubric system I talked about. So grading essays based on rubric. And after that, it's this, this one. So the multi-model auto grade system. So four years, the first one is one year. And then I think I, I took a break in between. So took a break sophomore year and then junior year, I did the very simple rubric system. And this year, I did the multi-model. Uh, if no one else has any questions, I think we can end it here today. Before you guys go, uh, please follow us, uh, Coding Minds, Facebook Coding Minds Ac Academy, and Twitter Coding Minds. Uh, Angel, you can take it away. Well, that's it for tonight's Coding Minds project presentation. Um, good job, Wilson. It was a pretty nice project. Um, tune in next week for another Coding Minds conference. And we will see you. We will see you then. We want to thank you on behalf of Coding Minds and have a great evening. Thank you so much.